welcome to my channel professor lpt now we are discussing about the milk and milk products today's lecture is on milk pasteurization as you have seen in the previous lecture we have discussed about market milk processing or marketing of liquid milk or liquid milk processing so in that context the basic flow of operation we have discussed in the last lecture in which one of the major step is milk pasteurization so today exclusively we will discuss about the pasteurization that is what is pasteurization how it came the history what are the methods what is the objective and objections what is the standard and then different methods and there are especially about bottle pasteurization batch pasteurization and htst pasteurization and we will more details discuss about htst pasteurization first we will learn a very brief history of pasteurization basically this term pasteurization came from the great scientist from france that is louis pasteur we know his works in many aspect of pathogens or bacteria so in his process he developed discovered that the wine used to get spoiled so to prevent the spoilage of wine he has been trying different experiments and in some occasion he found that when the wine is kept in the bottle and it is closed and heated that wine won't get spoiled so from that he realized that there are some germs which is causing the spoilage so later he tried the similar methods for milk to prevent the quick spoilage and that's how the process of pasteurization came and the name came from the scientist louis pasteur here is the exact definition of pasteurization or we can say this is the definition as per the legal terms the term pasteurization as applied to market milk today refers to the process of heating every particle of milk to at least 63 degree celsius for 30 minutes or 72 degree celsius for 15 seconds or to any temperature and time combination which is equally efficient in approved and properly operated equipment followed by immediate cooling of milk to 5 degree celsius or below so this is the legal definition which says the specific temperature of 63 degree centigrade for 30 second that is the batch method or 72 degree celsius for 15 second that is the high temperature short time so these two point is very very important to remember and the third point is that after heating it should be cooled immediately otherwise it will create problem with the thermophilic organisms now let us understand the objective of pasteurization the objective firstly to render milk safe for human consumption by destruction of 100% vegetative pathogenic microorganisms so in this process all the pathogens are totally destroyed secondly to improve the keeping quality of milk by destruction of almost all spoilage organisms that could be up to 99% so the second objective is to improve the shelf life that is to preserve the milk to prevent the spoilage by destroying most of the spoilage organisms so in other words what is the need so need is to make the milk safe as it is difficult to exercise strict supervision over all milk samples it becomes necessary to pasteurize milk so as to make it safe for human consumption so pasteurization is done to made, mainly make it safe for human consumption so that no disease occurs after consuming milk secondly impairment of nutritive value of milk is negligible though it is a heat treatment but very little effect will be there on the nutritive value of the milk here are some of the objections about pasteurization firstly encourages slackening of efforts for sanitary milk production that is there is a assurance for improving the quality or preventing any hazards so that's why there may be a negligence it may be used to mask low quality milk it reduces the cream line or cream volume due to the heat treatment the cream separation to the top will be reduced pasteurized milk does not clot easily with rennet that is for making cheese 
even for making paneer also pasteurized milk is not so good it can give a false sense of security that is if there is any negligence in the process of pasteurization that gives a false security it fails to destroy bacterial toxins in milk in india pasteurization is not so necessary because invariably every household first boil the milk so these are some of the points which are towards that objections against pasteurization now you will see the formulation of standards as i told earlier in the definition the specific time and temperature so this is decided on three factors one is bacterial destruction that is mainly it should kill all the pathogens and majority of the spoilage organisms second is cream line reduction so due to heating the cream lines get reduced so that should be minimum and the third is phosphatase inactivation so phosphatase is a common enzyme naturally present in milk and this enzyme should be destroyed otherwise it will cause lipolysis and oxidation so to destroy this enzyme a specific temperature is required and which is optimum to kill all the pathogens that is how a test is developed for checking the pasteurization efficiency or phosphatase test for checking the pasteurization efficiency so based on these three factors the temperature decided is like 63 degree for 30 minute in case of batch method and in case of htst as i mentioned 72 degree for 15 second or we can increase the temperature where the time get reduced even at 90 degree 0.5 second is enough so based on this three point the different temperature is decided now regarding bacterial destruction as we have mentioned the 100% pathogen should be destroyed that is the vegetative forms but it may not be able to destroy the spore form many time pathogen can be present in spore form but this pasteurization cannot destroy secondly there is certain index organism so they are taken as the representative and that organism is destroyed means we can assume that all other pathogens are destroyed so initially mycobacterium tuberculosis which is a very heat resistant pathogen was taken as the index organism for pasteurization means if this m tuberculosis is destroyed we can assume all other pathogens are destroyed but later on it is changed and another heat resistant organism that is coxiella barnetti is taken as the index organism for milk pasteurization that means if coxiella barnetti is destroyed we can assume that all other pathogens are destroyed now cream line reduction as i have already mentioned earlier the cream line or cream volume is reduced progressively with increase in the temperature and time of heating so if we increase the temperature or time then the cream line will be reduced so we must have minimum such effect to ensure the least damage to the cream line we should always keep the temperature at the lowest possible but that will be suitable to kill the pathogen or the inactivate the enzyme that is the third factor phosphatase in inactivation that is a natural enzyme present in milk i have already explained this so when the phosphatase enzyme is destroyed then we can assume that pasteurization is efficient to kill all the pathogen so that is how the phosphatase test is used to detect the efficiency of pasteurization or sometime we call pasteurization efficiency test now we will see the methods of pasteurization basically seven methods we can see here first is in bottle pasteurization that is the very old practice the milk is first filled into the bottle and then it is pasteurized and sealed the second method is batch or holding or sometime called low temperature long time pasteurization as we have mentioned earlier 62 degree celsius for 30 minute the third is htst high temperature and long uh, short time high temperature and short time so this is the most common commercially practiced this only we are going to discuss in full details the fourth is vacuum pasteurization which is also called vac creation briefly we will discuss about that then stasanization this is another variety of pasteurization at high temperature then sixth is ultra high temperature pasteurization so this is a much higher temperature and similarly uperization also a higher temperature that is ultra pasteurization so this last three and 
four we are going to discuss very briefly so we will discuss full details about the HTST little bit about bottle and batch pasteurization so now first we will discuss about in the bottle pasteurization this is a old practice for pasteurizing the milk in the bottle mostly earlier days in glass bottle later of course it is done with the plastic bottle also so bottles are first filled with raw milk and tightly sealed with special caps then held at 63 to 66 degrees celsius for 30 minutes so earlier days first it was the glass bottle the milk is filled then it is tightly sealed and then it is heated Later on, then, then the bottles pass through water sprays, that is the cold water sprays for cooling the temperature of the milk and the bottle also. So this is the very brief about the in-bottle pasteurization. Somewhere in 70s, 80s and 90s, this were the main dairy plant using the glass bottle for packaging after pasteurization. Here we will see the advantages and disadvantages of bottle pasteurization. So in case of advantage, it prevents possibility of post pasteurization contamination. So once the milk is filled in the bottle, it is sealed tightly. So now after pasteurization, there is no scope for any contamination. The disadvantage that is the transfer of the wheat very slowly because it is a thick glass container or even if we use plastic container, the heat transfer is slow there is a greater risk of bottle breakage. So glass bottle, it is very heavy and risk of breakage, transport. So oversized bottles have to be used to allow for milk expansion during heating. Special types of watertight caps have to be used. These caps are very special and costly and many times we cannot get them back. Nowadays, this bottle pasteurization is becoming obsolete. Nowadays only the plastic packaging is used so the milk is pasteurized first and then it is packed in plastic pouches. But in case of flavored milk nowadays it is used in glass bottle or sometime in high quality food grade plastic bottles. Now we will discuss about the LTLT that is low temperature long time method of pasteurization which is also called as batch pasteurization. This is suitable for small scale operation even in the industry. So this is also known as low temperature long time or LTLT. Here milk is heated at 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and then promptly cool down to 5 degrees Celsius or below. Here the heating happens indirectly. The heat moves through metal wall into the product and then during cooling from product it comes out. So here heating is done in double jacketed vat or by heating through spraying of steam or through coil. So all these three different varieties we are going to discuss. So in batch pasteurization which is called LTLT there are three types as I mentioned. The first one is water jacketed vat. So this is double walled around the sides and bottom in which hot water or steam under partial vacuum circulates for heating and cold water for cooling. So this is a double jacketed vat at the jacket that is the space between two wall the steam is circulated or cold water is circulated for heating or cooling. The outer wall is insulated to reduce the heat loss and the heat exchange happens through the inner walls. Then milk here is agitated slowly by moving through a peddlers or propellers. Here the upper lid is kept open when heating and when it is reaching the temperature that is the holding time that is 30 minutes we have to hold at 62 degrees Celsius that time the lid will be closed. After that time it can be opened and the cold water will be circulated for cooling. So this is the first type that is the double jacketed vat for batch pasteurization. Here is a diagram for vat type double jacketed batch pasteurizer. Here we can see that gap between these two wall where the steam will be there and at the top there is opening there is uh, for thermometer recording temperature, agitator, airspace, inlet line and at the bottom we can see the agitator and the lead etc. Here is the second type of batch pasteurizer. 
that is water spray type in which a film of water is sprayed from a perforated pipe over the surface of the tank holding the product. So hot water is sprayed over the tank for heating. The product is agitated as in case of vat type I have explained earlier and a rapidly moving continuous film of hot water provides rapid heat transfer through which the milk get heated. So this is the second type water spray type that is batch pasteurizer. This is the third variety of batch pasteurizer that is the coil vat type. The heating or cooling medium is pumped through a coil placed in either a horizontal or vertical position while the coil is turned through the product. The turning coil agitates the product and in this case the disadvantage is this coil, coil cannot be cleaned so naturally there are certain other issues. So in this case there is a coil inside the container or the vat through this coil either the hot water or the cold water is passed and the milk is there around this coil. So through this coil the milk get heated or when we want to cool it get cooled with the cold water. Now we will discuss about the second method which is most commercially used for large scale pasteurization that is high temperature short time pasteurization and here is a flow diagram for the whole operation which I am going to explain step by step. From the <coughs> top right corner we can see that raw milk tank is there from which it goes to the balance tank and there is a flow control valve through which it goes to milk feed pump and then it goes to the regeneration section for initial heating then it goes to that red section for further heating and finally it is going to the holding tube for actual holding period that is 15 second. After that it goes if it is sufficient or proper then it is going to the regeneration section for cooling. Here it will lose the heat and the cold milk will receive that heat. After that it goes for final cooling into the cooling section that is blue color square and finally it goes to the pasteurized milk storage from which it goes for packaging and then distribution. So this is the brief flow of the operation for HTST which every things details I am going to discuss later. So let us discuss little more about the FCBT that is the flow control balance tank. So this is the float control balance tank which supplies the milk for the Pasteurization that is the beginning it maintains a constant head of milk for feeding the raw milk pump. It also receives any sub temperature milk diverted by FDV. FDV is flow diversion valve. I have mentioned in the previous flow chart whenever the pasteurization is not optimum automatically it will shut the flow of milk to go towards the pasteurized side and it will go back to the FCBT for re-pasteurization. So in the right side diagram we can see there is a balance tank that is having a automatically controlled float valve. There is an inlet, there is an outlet and there are other details. Now we will discuss about plate heat exchanger. This is the main part where all the heating and cooling happens. Plate heat exchanger also called as paraflow is commonly used in the HTST pasteurization for heating and cooling. The plate heat exchanger is a compact, simple, easily cleaned and inspected unit. Its plates may be used for heating, cooling, regeneration and holding. So in this diagram at the middle we can see the compact part where it, the large number of plates are hold together. So this is used both for heating or cooling. So initially milk get heated from the already going the pasteurized milk that is the regeneration section and then cooling is done by changing the media it's a separate section and then holding section where the final heating happens by holding it for 15 seconds at a specific temperature like 72 degrees Celsius. So some of these things again I am going to discuss next. So here I will discuss little more details about the plate heat exchanger because this is the most important part where the heat exchange takes place either for heating or cooling. 
the first diagram left side we can see different parts of the plated exchanger there is carrying beam and holding part then tightening bolt and we can see at the middle number of different plated exchanger plates which are fixed one by one and finally they are fitted at the top there is a pipe connection through which the milk can go or come out in inlet and exit and there are specific rubber gasket for every plate which prevents the leakage of milk and it is arranged in such a way that between two plates only one liquid can go either the milk or the heating medium so this we can see in the right side top that is the red arrow showing the heating medium and the blue arrow showing the cooling medium and both side the white arrow showing the movement of milk in the bottom right side we can see how the milk and the medium is flowing the blue color that is showing the milk so here we can see that in between two plate blue that is the milk is flowing in in the next section that it cannot go it is directly going to the second section so alternately in every between two plates alternately the medium of heating is flowing or the milk is flowing so they never come in contact and that separation happens by tightly packed gasket and between two interval there is a connection of pipe which allows the milk or the medium to go so this is the trick through which alternately the milk and the medium are exchanging the heat either for heat loss or for heat receiving so this is the main part for pasteurization in hdst system here are some of the details about the plates which i have already explained the heat moves from a warm to cold medium through stainless steel plates a space of 3 mm is maintained between the plates by a non absorbent rubber gasket or seal which can be vulcanized to them the plates are numbered and must be properly assembled as per that order they are tightened into place and are designed to provide a uniform but not excessively turbulent flow of product with rapid heat transfer so these are some of the specification about the plates they are numbered they are having a specific gap of 3 mm and they are fixed with gasket which prevents the leakage of liquid either water or milk and they are designed in such a way that it provides a kind of flow turbulent flow which i am going to explain later so here is some more details of the plates and how it function so these plates has got raised sections or corrugations so these are thin stainless steel plate with corrugations on the plates in the form of knobs or diamonds or channels and that help to provide the turbulent action required for the milk and because of this corrugation it gives large amount of space which helps in fast heat exchange because the surface area plays important role for heat exchange now greater the capacity is secured by adding more plates so if we want to have more capacity of milk to pass through then we can increase the number of plates thereby we can increase the efficiency or make it faster the ports are provided in appropriate places that is in the every plate there are ports in the top and on the bottom of the plates to permit both the product and the medium that is the heating and cooling to flow without mixing so there are ports through which the either the milk or the heating medium can pass through so it is designed in such a way in the plate heat exchanger in case of hdst pasteurization there are four different sections first is regeneration then heating then holding and then cooling section so regeneration is the section where the outgoing pasteurized milk that heat is used for heating the incoming cold milk that is how the economics of heat conservation is play used very nicely so milk usually enters the hdst plate pasteurizer at 4 degrees celsius and flows on one side of a plate in opposite direction to the flow of hot milk on the other side so here we have thin plate so heat exchange will be very good between the plate the thin uh, milk film will move and the movement or direction of the milk and the heating medium is opposite so the efficiency of heat transfer will be better the energy regeneration is one of the most important economic features of any heat transfer 
In HTST, the regeneration consists simply by warming up the cold incoming milk by heat transfer from the freshly pasteurized hot milk. Usually, this will raise the temperature of the incoming milk to 60 degrees Celsius and cools the pasteurized milk from 74 to 20 degrees Celsius. So here, both way it is benefited. Incoming fresh cold milk is getting heated, whereas outgoing hot pasteurized milk, which has to be cooled down, that is also getting cooled down. So this is the better economic utilization of heat or energy. Now this is in continuation about rege regeneration. In this way, the modern exchangers achieve over 80% energy regeneration. A primary consideration in milk to milk regeneration is to make sure that the pasteurized product cannot become contaminated. Once it is pasteurized, it should not get contaminated. And this is done by having pasteurized milk at higher pressure. So there are two different flow of milk. So pasteurized milk and raw milk. So pasteurized milk is kept at a higher pressure than the raw milk. So there is no possibility for the raw milk to contaminate the pasteurized milk. So the pressure in case of pasteurized milk is 15 psi. In case of raw milk, it is 14 psi. And for the heating and cooling medium, it is 12 to 13 psi. So because of this difference in pressure, so the contamination can never happen to the finished pasteurized milk. Now the second section is heating section. So first one is regeneration that is preheating. So here hot water is used as heating agent. The difference in temperature between the product and the heating medium must be kept as low as possible. So when the difference in the heating is low, then only the heat transfer will be better. And the hot water or saturated steam at atmospheric pressure used as heating medium in pasteurizers. At the end of pasteurization, milk must attain the temperature of pasteurization and is passed immediately to the holding section. So in this section, milk will reach to that pasteurization temperature that is 72 degrees Celsius. In the next section, it will be hold for 15 seconds. That is called holding section. In the plate heat exchanger, first two sections I have explained. First is regeneration section, second is heating section, and the third is holding section where after reaching to 72 degree, it has to be hold for 15 seconds. So holding tube or plate ensures that the milk is held for a specified time, not less than 15 seconds at the pasteurization temperature that is 72 degrees Celsius or more. A thermometer which is installed after the holder records the temperature of the product at the end of holding period. So this is sensor based and whenever this temperature goes down, it will be reflected in the control panel. The last section in this plate heat exchanger is the cooling section where milk has to be cooled at the earliest possible to 4 to 5 degrees Celsius. So here the cold water or brine or polyalcohol solutions are used as the cooling medium and in case of this section, the cooling medium flows opposite to the outgoing milk and finally bringing to 4 degrees Celsius. So this milk comes first to the regeneration section. So partially it is cooled to 20 degrees Celsius. After that, further cooling is done in this cooling section. So we have already discussed about the heating of in the pasteurization that is by using the plate heat exchanger. In this whole process, one of the important unit is flow diversion valve which decides the milk flow when the pasteurization is sufficient then it allows the milk to go forward and further it will go to regeneration and then it will go to the cooling and storage. So this flow diversion valve remains after the final holding before the regeneration. So this roots the milk after heat treatment properly pasteurized milk flows forwards through the unit so this is a sensor based operation with particular temperature or it will create a particular pressure which allows it to detect that the pasteurization is sufficient so unpasteurized milk or whenever the temperature is not reaching the required legal limit here it will sense that and automatically it will shut the flow and it will not allow the milk to go further rather it will divert it back to the original tank that is the FCBT from which that milk will come back again for the processing or pasteurization. So FDB plays a very important role in this process. So here this is about the milk or cream for pasteurization. So because there is higher solid or higher fat the temperature requirement changes. 
so there is a combination of higher temperature and long run time recommended for HTST pasteurization of dairy products with higher content of solid so in case of pasteurized cream of 18 percent fat it requires 75 degree 15 second in case of cream is 35 percent fat then it requires 80 degree celsius for 15 second and in case of pasteurized concentrated milk so many time milk is concentrated with higher total solid at that time we required 85 degree celsius for 25 second so after pasteurization and chilling the milk will be stored pasteurized milk will be stored in separate tank from that it comes for packaging so in the previous lecture where i have discussed about the market milk processing the flow of operation in which i have discussed about the packaging so it is done by formed fill and seal mechanism it can be single machine or series of machine depending on the capacity so here a pouch if a, a plastic film roll will be there at the behind it comes from behind then first it get folded and forms a longitudinal pouch then milk is falling in required quantity then there will be a sealing and then the next process goes on that's the process i have already explained earlier now storage of milk so pasteurized milk after packaging there should be a storage room where all the packets will be stored until delivery or it should be in the storage tank after pasteurization so in any milk plant it is necessary to provide refrigerated rooms where milk can be stored until delivery the temperature of milk storage room should be 5 degrees celsius or below so as to check bacterial growth because there are still some bacteria remaining in case of pasteurization it is not fully killing all the organism it is not a sterilization process now let us talk about the advantage of HTST pasteurization. So firstly capacity to heat treat milk quickly and adequately while maintaining rigid quality control over both the raw and finished product. So it's a very quick and fast. So industrially large scale processing is very suitable. Less floor space required because here the plate heat exchange everything is very compact. Lower initial cost. Packaging can start soon after pasteurization, so efficient use of labor, easily cleaned and sanitized and adapted well with CIP that is cleaning in place which I have already discussed in the cleaning and sanitization of dairy plant and there is automatic precision control. So nowadays the entire operation is under control with a control panel and every places there can be temperature indicator, time indicator, sensors and everything. Even nowadays it can be computerized and system controlled. Here are some of the disadvantages of HTST system that is not adapted to handle small quantities of several liquid milk products. So small scale processing is not possible or other different kind of liquid milk products is not possible. Gaskets require constant attention for possible damage and lack of sanitation. So gaskets plays very important role for leakage proof movement of the liquid either the medium or the liquid milk. So that requires very close monitoring. Complete drainage is not possible. So some milk here and there will be retained. Then greater accumulation of milk stone in the heating section. So due to the higher temperature in the heating section often there will be accumulation of milk stone. So I have discussed in details about HTST pasteurization but I mentioned at the beginning there are other methods of pasteurization. So here is a method called vacuum pasteurization or also called vac creation. So here pasteurization of milk or cream is done under reduced pressure by applying direct steam. So under low pressure that is why vacuum and direct steam is applied as you can see in the diagram. So the process was first developed in New Zealand. And here the specific equipment is used that is called VAC creator and the process is called VAC creation. So this is designed to remove feed and other volatile flavors from cream and that cream is used for making the butter. So this is a different method of pasteurization called VAC creation or vacuum pasteurization. Now another method that is stasanization. So this is a, another different method which is which was developed by a French person called Henry Stassano. So here pasteurization is carried out in a tubular heat exchanger consisting of three concentric tubes. So earlier we have seen plate heat exchanger, here it is tubular heat exchanger. So there are three tubes, they are concentric, that means one is inside the other. So three parallel tubes, one inside the other, the middle 
one will carry the milk the inner one and the outer one will carry the heating medium so the milk is getting the heating from both side from inside and from outside same way the cooling also happen so here the heating milk to desired temperature by passing in between two water heated pipes through the narrow space of 0.6 to 0.8 millimeter here milk is heated to about 74 degree celsius for 7 second and then promptly cooled so this is a another method of pasteurization called stasanization so this is the machinery for stasanization you can see the large number of pipes at the background so there are three different concentric tubes outer one will carry the water and the innermost one will carry the water or medium for heating or cooling and the middle layer will have the milk for heating so here is another method that is ultra high temperature pasteurization or sometime we call uht ultra high temperature treatment so this is a full topic separately i am going to discuss in a separate lecture so briefly it is developed in 1950s this uses temperature time combination of 135 degree to 150 degree celsius for no hold the success of uht depends on immediate aseptic packaging so here it is a very high temperature so after that immediately it should be packaged under aseptic condition so these both things i am going to discuss in a separate lecture now this is another method of pasteurization called uperization so it is a short form of ultra pasteurization that was developed in switzerland it's a short form ultra pasteurization developed in switzerland called uperization here milk is heated with direct steam so milk is getting the steam directly and reaching the temperature of 150 degree celsius for a fraction of second whereas in case of HTST or UHT the medium or steam is never directly touching the milk so this is a continuous process of heating that is uperization so here are some of the advantages of uperized milk like long keeping quality because it is at a very high temperature almost sterilized removal of feed and other volatile of flavors it is appreciable homogenization effect it has got and reduction in acidity because directly steam is getting into the milk and it is having a very efficient destruction of microorganisms so these are some of the advantages of uperized milk now we are at the end of today's lecture so today we have discussed about pasteurization with brief history definition standards requirements advantages disadvantages uh, objections etc followed by different methods like bottle pasteurization batch pasteurization there are three different methods in batch pasteurization and then we discussed in more details about HTST pasteurization there are different sections of heating different other aspects of plate heat exchangers in details we have discussed and finally I have discussed some more other methods of pasteurization like UHT, uperization, stasanization etc. So with this I finish today's lecture hope it is easy to understand and you can learn it better from my lecture notes. Thank you.